George Floyd's death caught on camera does evoke memories of the 1991 beating of Rodney King in Los Angeles. King was beaten by four police officers while others stood by and watched. So after they tied me up like that and handcuffed me, I thought I was going to die. I did. Four officers were tried but acquitted on assault charges. And following that verdict, as you may remember, riots exploding across Los Angeles. Buildings were burned, businesses were looted, and people were beaten in the street. King himself called for calm. I want to say, you know, can we, can we all get along? Can we, can we get along? A now infamous quote, riots continued for several days after King's plea. There were 50 riot-related deaths, 6,000 arrests, and more than 1,000 businesses were damaged. Joining us now is John Burris. He's a former attorney for Rodney King. Appreciate your time tonight. It is hard not to make parallels between uh, these two cases. There were many who felt as though history may in fact repeat itself as we awaited a verdict today. I think top of mind, uh, your reaction, having been part of Rodney King's case and uh, what followed in the city of LA, uh, your thoughts on the guilty verdict this afternoon. Well, frankly, I, I was worried that we could have a Rodney King uh, uh, second uh, in the uh, in the works here, um, because you know I was really concerned about the demonization of George Floyd by the defense counsel. Much of what happened in the Rodney King case, and I wasn't certain that many of the jurors would buy into that and then think of themselves as supporting the police because George Floyd was had all these negative warts, if you will. But I actually felt better about it once I realized that the verdict was coming in in a very short period of time. Then I understood that you, you could not get a verdict, uh, not guilty verdict, that quickly. So I felt really good about it. There were uh, issues that were very similar, and there were things that were dissimilar. The most significant dissimilar aspect of it, it was 30-year difference. And at the time Rodney King case took place, people had not seen that kind of level of brutality and did not really expect police to engage in that conduct. But since Rodney King, there have been time, there have been many, many examples of this kind of brutality that was taking place. So George Floyd was something that the general population had better feel for and were not as willing to reject it as they were in Rodney King's case. And actually what we saw was a coming together of the nation around uh, uh, Rodney, around George Floyd and condemning the police officer's conduct. So there's a clear difference. But the other diff the big difference is in my mind's eye is that you had a jury, a diverse jury, and you had many years of police misconduct cases. So we had a receptive population to understand and appreciate that this conduct in fact is real. And that even though the person may have warts, it does not justify their level of brutality. So I was quite pleased about it. Now, I, I uh, you know, to me, I was most relieved. I certainly didn't want to see recurrence of rioting and beatings and people being killed in the name of, 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 of a verdict. So I was quite pleased that it didn't happen. And you make a fascinating point about the jury. We've been talking about this on the air all day. Five men, seven women, six white, six uh, non-white. What was the jury racial composition in the Rodney King case? The Rodney King, uh, when I tell you, there were three Rodney King trials, okay? There was the first one that everyone knows about. That was in Simi Valley. Then there was a second Rodney King case. was a federal trial in Los Angeles. And then there was a third Rodney King trial, the one that I was involved in, that was in Los Angeles. But the, the one that everyone knows about is the one in Simi Valley, which was outside of LA in a suburban community. That was really a, a place haven where police officers from LA and LA sheriff live. And so that, that, jury, verdict, that, that uh, jury composition was all white. Uh, there weren't any blacks uh, in that, uh, uh, in that uh, jury verdict. So the, the racial composition was totally different. And on top of that, these were these were people who were police oriented so they looked for excuses to justify police conduct and and in, and in Rodney King case he was demonized he was a big brute he kept he could take a lot of punches he was uh, so strong and the people felt that he would crush them at the same time they were beating them with batons and every time he reacted to a baton they acted as if that was an aggressive move and so I had to fight through that myself in the civil cases so this was different Although I must admit the defense lawyer did a, did a lot 
to demonize uh, George uh, by this whole issues around uh, uh, around his drug use and his physical mental, uh, his blood pressure and his heart condition uh, and and, uh, and and things of that nature to all to suggest that those were the reasons why he died. And I think the jurors got past that causation quickly, pretty quickly. And once they did that, then they were stuck with the nine minutes. Once they once they dealt with the nine minutes, then it was a question, how did the officer act in those nine minutes? And I think that's why he was convicted, because he didn't act like a caring person. And he John, like real, a person who didn't care. John, real quick before we go, I'm curious, as someone who dealt with the Rodney King case, on one hand, is it progress because there was a guilty verdict today, but not a guilty verdict 30 years ago? Or is there a lack of progress, progress because three decades later, we're still watching an African-American male facing violence from the police? How do you well, see I, it? I, that's a very, very good question. And I will tell you that uh, George Floyd hasn't stopped anything in terms of police killings. Now, I've had two in the last three weeks that are all very questionable. And I've had over seven since George Floyd. But George Floyd has not stopped uh, anything in terms of police shootings. Uh, but it has offered an opportunity for police reform in areas other than the shooting. But in terms of what happened here, I don't know that I would attribute a great deal to it, other than the fact that it was an, it was a day in, a case in time and a point in time when all the forces came together to say this was terrible, this is outrageous. I don't believe it will have an impact on cases that are currently being tried in Texas or in California and New Mexico or wherever. I don't see that kind of reach for the cases because each case is local to that particular community. What's going on there and those police officers. However, I do think since Rodney King, there's been a lot of reform efforts made, and I think George Floyd has helped that as well. But not, they have not stopped the police shootings. There have been, you know, there's over 1,200 police shootings last year, and there's been many, and, and more recently, including this young, two, the young boy that got shot in Chicago, and and the young uh, boy that was shot in in Minneapolis, uh, Brooklyn Center. So I don't see George Floyd's verdict as having any, any impact on those at all. It just means that this one case, where everybody was focused around it, saw a verdict they were pretty particularly happy with, including myself. Hard to believe that it has been 30 years, and although progress has been made, it does indicate how much more work uh, we still have to do. John Burris, former attorney for Rodney King, we appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. Good to be with you.